Um, I thought about my spouse. Is he my soulmate? In the past five years or so, there have been many times where we get back from somewhere. I park in the driveway, sit there and think, I don't want to come home, but it is my home too. Our relationship was pretty good up until 10 years ago. And now I think there's a soulmate out there and I have not found them yet. Is it my spouse who's refusing to open up his heart and share with me? Or is it someone else I've not looked for or found yet? I'm not really sure how long to be with him. Okay, so I would say that um, in these experiences, you're creating, is there something out there for me that I haven't found yet? I'm feeling a sense of emptiness and vacuousness. And I expect that my partner should fill it. And if they're not, then somebody else must be able to fill it. Okay. So first off, there may be other experiences out there for you. Sometimes a relationship comes to its natural conclusion. You know, I am a big fan of the consciously decoupling sort of movement that, uh, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow and um, uh, Catherine, I can't remember her last name, sort of made popular, but I would caution that when you start asking yourself, saying to yourself, I need more, I want more, someone else has got to give it to me in order for me to feel satisfied, then what's actually coming up for you is probably a deeper wound to be explored or a, an adventure that you go on and that and that you're being asked to explore. And maybe the inner journey looks like an outward exploration that can happen. Maybe the inner journey looks like an outward exploration, but I would have you in my perspective, our relationships are oftentimes a mirror for what's going on inside of us. So if you feel like there's a gap that exists between inside of you or between you and you, then someone else Engaging with people is a wonderful way to explore connectedness. And does connectedness fill some of that gap? Sure, sure. Um, but is this person going to be the answer to, to my feeling um, like I'm stuck? Probably not. Maybe for the first three to six months, and then it's going to become a relationship, <laughs> just like any other relationship. And the person's going to get you're going to know the person inside and out. So long-term vitality and interest in novelty is something we generate. It's not something that we necessarily have to rely on someone else to make generate for us. We can create it for ourselves and share it with our partners. And then when we share it together, then that becomes bigger than each of us on our own. Um, but there may be something inside that's asking for growth and expansion. And I, <clears throat> I will argue that oftentimes this feeling comes up because you've had 10 years of safety, you've had 10 years of commitment, you've had X number of years of team spirit love. And, and now it's like, I've learned that now I'm ready for more. And, and maybe your partner is not ready for what you're ready for. Right. And so then that feels like, oh, I'm stuck because they're not moving. Um, and so this is, and so this is where there's sometimes a grieving process, not because you have to leave them per se, but because it's likely that there will be a restructuring of the relationship contract between you on mental, emotional, and maybe even spiritual levels, because there's an aspect of you that's asking for growth, for variety, for newness, for novelty, for another adventure. And either this person's able to go on that journey with you or not. Again, doesn't necessarily mean you divorce them, but it may mean that the structure of your lives and the way that you relate to each other on an emotional level evolves in a different way. Um, Esther Perel has a great quote. She says that most people will have three big relationships in their lives. Sometimes they're with different people, but sometimes they're with the same person, right? So it may be, especially after that amount of time that you are arriving at a crossroads in this relationship um, and so there's some aspect of how you are inhabiting yourself and how you're inhabiting your life and how you're inhabiting that relationship that is being called um, to expand or to grow or to change. Um, and so that's a really fun and delicious place to be. And I feel kind of excited for you with that. Um, but I would probably just, I would just have you sit with and caution um, rather than jumping to the idea that there's a soulmate out there that's going to liven me up. Imagine that there's a soulmate in here 
that has access to a tremendous amount of my own life force and vitality and creativity and novelty and change and variety. And I really want to find ways to access that within myself. And now once you've done that, maybe you will attract a new partner, but it's going to be because they are someone who's able to access that within themselves as well. Right. And so now you're a match because you're vibing at the same level, not because you're volleying something between you because you're thirsty and you're looking for someone else to, to feed you, so to speak. Um, because then whether you decide to stay or go in your current relationship, it's not going to come from a place of scarcity or trying to fill a gap. It's going to come from a place of being filled up and knowing for sure that this is the right next step for you on your path. It's kind of like whether you stay or go is sort of irrelevant. It's the energy with which you inhabit either decision. And once you are filled up in that way, you will know what's right for you. And wild horses will not be able to stop you from doing what it is that you know you must do. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Also remember to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I put out videos once a week and I wouldn't want you to miss out.